Well, guys, the Ryzen 7000 series is here, and AMD is really pulling out all the stops this time. But while the ultra high-end flagships like the 7900X and the 7950X look absolutely amazing, I'm actually more excited about what the 7600X brings to the table. Now, let's be honest. The 2600X, 3600X, 5600X are all considered some of the best bang for the buck gaming CPUs when they were launched. The Intel i5-12600K is right up there as well, especially when you look at its performance and things like rendering. But can the 7600X continue that tradition? Well, we're gonna find out. With 13 games paired up with the world's fastest GPU, with the exception of the newly announced RTX 4000 series. But uh, anyways, Besides the point, we're going to put that as well as with a bunch of real world applications as well. Uh, hi, I'm the Lanko 3. Ever since I learned to talk, I can't stop. These panels help you get inside, but it's also kind of in my mouth. I'm obsessed with panels, though. I have more at the back to hide cables. Good thing I work out to carry those three radiators. The fans have not yet learned to speak, but they're very pretty to look at. And I love when the air brushes against my metal skin. I prefer them closer. My brother is more quiet. I wonder what he's thinking. I was born to excel though, <laughs> find me below. So the 7600X is the lowest priced CPU in AMD's Zen 4 lineup right now. It's being rolled out at the same price as the 5600X and a few bucks more than the 12600K goes for right now. But it isn't exactly targeted towards people on a shoestring budget because this isn't exactly a simple drop and upgrade like all the other Zen processors from the last half a decade. Since AM5 is a brand new platform, grabbing one of these new CPUs is now tied to a purchase of a new motherboard and DDR5 memory. And yeah, that's gonna drive up the overall cost. But on the other hand, AMD's really pushed their architecture to the next level on a bunch of fronts, but really focused on what games love most. It's what we like to call the three Cs. That will be clocks, cache, and to a lesser extent, course. The Ryzen 5 7600X clock speeds are a giant leap forward when you compare them to the 5600X. I mean, the difference is like night and day. And Zen 4 is designed to achieve those higher frequencies for much, much longer periods of time. There's still 32 megabytes of L3 cache, and no, we're not seeing any 3D V cache here, but it's still backed up by a new L2 cache structure and a totally revamped execution engine for increased core efficiency. Honestly, though, all of this was absolutely needed to compete with the unique core setup in Intel's Alder Lake and the upcoming Rocket Lake architectures. And there's no thing as a free lunch either, since high clock speeds means more heat, which also means more power consumption, even when you consider the more efficient 5 nanometer manufacturing process. So while R5600X needs just 78 watts uh, for an all-core workload, the 7600X chugs down a constant 110 watts. That's a bit less than the 12600K, but still a lot more than AMD's last-gen processors. But the bigger challenge here is actually cooling the CPU, because remember, the heat is actually concentrated in a much more confined space at 5 nanometers, and even with one of the best CPU coolers we've ever tested running at full speed, 83 degrees was the best we got. But then you turn down the fans to 50% and things get even bit toastier. This thing is well below throttle temperatures, but make no mistake about it, folks, the 7600X is a lot harder to cool than the 5600X or even the 5800X 3D. But there's also a silver lining here as well, especially for gamers, because even in a pretty multi-core intensive game, every single CPU tends to sip down a lot less power. And that, of course, leads to much, much more manageable temperatures as well. As a matter of fact, if all you're doing is gaming, you can actually get away with an even lower end cooler, but I wouldn't recommend that. Now, I know I'm focusing a lot of the benefits of all of this for gaming, but you also have to remember that usually what's good for frame rate increases will also benefit some real world performance as well. And I'm gonna pause right here because what you're about to see is pretty freaking mind blowing and Cinebench personifies it perfectly. The uptake from the 5600X to the 7600X is about 50%. I mean, Intel did that with Alder Lake, but they needed to move to a whole new architecture with two types of cores to achieve that. Meanwhile, AMD's done that on what's essentially a souped up Zen architecture that's been polished to perfection, even on single threaded results. The rest of the real world benchmarks follow the same thread of massive performance increases against the 5600X. And I mean, massive with every result being 35 to 50% faster. This allows the 7600X to actually beat the 5800X 3D and act as a bridge between that CPU 
and the 5900X. It also gives the 7600X enough of a boost that it competes with the 12600K. Sometimes it loses, but most of the time it's ahead. But you can really see that the lead pretty much changes based on the app. It'll be really interesting to see what happens with Rocket Lake in these charts really soon. But AMD also added a teeny tiny RDNA 2 graphics core with two CUs to these new processors. And no, that's not anywhere as enough power to actually game on. It's just more about getting an image to display on a monitor without a need of a discrete graphics card. But it also has full encode and decode capabilities. Anyways, technically, this should allow the Ryzen 7000 series processors to use their IGPs in a hybrid graphics mode, working alongside the discrete card to accelerate rendering and applications that support it like Premiere. Unfortunately, it turns out the encoding or decoding resources on the new AMD CPUs couldn't be accessed by Premiere, even though QuickSync works on the Intel side. Now, I'm thinking it'll take a few more driver and program updates to get things up and running properly. So that pretty much sets the baseline here, but I know what you guys are here for, and that's gaming results. So in order to really put these CPUs through their paces, I'm gonna be using the Strix RTX 3090 Ti LC, which considering the crazy clock speeds it maintains is currently the fastest graphics card on the planet, or at least one of them. So let's start at 1080p. And I know, I know, you're never gonna use an RTX 3090 Ti to play at such a low resolution, are you? I mean, if you are, just don't waste that kind of money. So let's start with the good news. If you're into competitive shooters that are usually CPU bound and specifically lightly threaded, the Ryzen 5 7600X is just on a whole other level. We're seeing that here with CSGO, Valorant, and Rainbow Six. I mean, forget about the 5600X. This thing can easily run with the 5900X. Then there's a bunch of games that have less of a CPU limitation, but they can still benefit from a faster running processor. Here, the 7600X still does really, really well by delivering about the same overall performance as the 5800X 3D, which was the last generation's top dog gaming CPU. It also beats the 12600K in a lot of situations and stays way, way ahead of the 5600X. That's amazing, guys. And then there's always gonna be games that favor one platform over the other, and that's where Call of Duty lands. It just loves Alder Lake. At least it does now after a bunch of Windows and game updates. But a lot of modern games fall into the category of being severely GPU bottlenecked at 1080p. And yes, that does apply to the stupidly fast RG RTX 3090 Ti LC. That means every single processor gives you about the same amount of performance other than in a few rare instances where Alder Lake gets better 1% lows. The only way around that would be to lower the detail settings, but that's not something that you're ever gonna wanna do when you're spending thousands of dollars on an upgrade. Right? This is just the reality these days, guys. In most cases, the most bang for the buck you can get for gaming comes from a GPU upgrade, not from the processor side. Now, frame rates will even be closer for most of you since you likely won't be plucking down megabucks on the ultimate insanely expensive GPU to pair with a $300 processor. Because most of you will be perfectly happy with something in the RTX 3060 to 3070 performance categories. So the performance gaps are already a bit inflated because of our RTX 3090. And guess what happens at 1440p? Some expected things and some odd things as well. First of all is CSGO. And while the 7600X won big at 1080p, for whatever reason, performance takes a massive hit, especially the 1% lows. And yes, as usual, we ran this test four times and it happened every single time. On the other hand, Valorant results are still pretty dominant and the same thing goes for Rainbow Six. Things have tightened up a bit, but the 7600X is still convincingly out front. It's also important to put the whole 5600X versus 7600X situation into a bit of a better context, since I'm pretty sure that's what a lot of people will be looking at here. Even in some normally GPU bound games, the Zen 4 architecture wins out, sometimes in a massive way and other times less. But overall, there's a clear advantage. However, once we move from that group of games, I believe more of the bottleneck has moved to the GPU. Now sure, there are some areas where you'll still get some narrow leads for the 7600X or the 12600K, but for all intents and purposes, all the CPUs here are pretty much identical. It doesn't matter if it's A5900X or all the way to the end, the 5600X. The charts just look like a flat line. But there's something else that I didn't show yet, and that's this the 7600X is actually able to beat, or at least match, 
the much, much, much more expensive 7950X in gaming. I mean, this isn't anything new since that's exactly what happened sometimes between the 5600X and the 5950X, but now it's actually happening a lot more often. And that makes this $300 processor simply one of the best options for high frame rate gaming right now. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this up really quickly. This is a huge epic step forward for the Zen architecture. There was a time when we were all talking about tiny incremental benefits when going from one CPU generation to another. Intel, I'm looking at you. The competition is pushing both Intel and AMD to pull some rabbits out of their hats. First, it was Alder Lake, which despite all of its initial problems, put Intel in the lead. And now, AMD responded. The numbers are pretty mind-blowing too, guys. I mean, the 7600X is so fast in multi-threaded apps that it competes against the 5800 series. And the 5600X is a spec in the rearview mirror. Even in gaming, it's one of the fastest CPUs on the planet right now. However, while past Ryzen processors had a ton of added value since they came with a clear upgrade path from previous generations, it isn't the case this time because the 7600X might have a tempting price but you'll actually need to eat up the cost of an entire platform upgrade. So AMD has shown their hand, but the biggest question is, is it enough? They've matched or beaten the 12600K, but All the Lake is on its way out and the 7600X is about to face Rocket Lake, which is why if you're in the market for an upgrade, I'd recommend waiting. No, I mean, not for months, but just weeks, because after that point, you'll be able to make a much more informed decision. Until then, it's just so damn good to have some competition, baby. And yes, please spend responsibly, folks.